It's beautiful, it's packed with features, and it's one of the most aggressively priced machines out there. Could this be the best machine for a home barista? The Escaso Steel Duo offers you a lot of machine for the money and it really punches above its weight in terms of price. But it's not without its compromises. So I'm gonna tell you where its strengths are, where its compromises are, and why those compromises might be made in the perfect places for a home barista. I've been using this machine for over a year now. It was sent to me by Espresso Parts, a great company and partner of mine who distributes this machine along with many others in North America. Now, it wasn't sent to me for the purposes of a review. Espresso Parts has not seen this review. Escaso has not seen this review, and they do not get to see it before you do. Now, let's get specific. This machine comes in at $1,600 US, which is more expensive than the entry-level Breville, Gaggia, Rancilio, all those types of machines, but less expensive than something like a Rocket or a Lelite Mera X. Now I'm gonna tell you a little secret about espresso machines. They can be an absolute black hole of spending money. And if you are the spouse of an espresso fanatic, you understand this very well. Once you get to a certain point money-wise, you really start to get into the territory of diminishing returns. You start paying thousands of dollars more for a little bit more machine. And what Escaso has tried to do with the steel line and the Duo in particular, is they've tried to nestle right into that sweet spot of you get a lot of features for the least amount of money. And to be honest, for a home user like me, I think that they have done a fantastic job. Now, the first thing that anybody says to me when I show them this machine or they look it up on Google or they see it on my YouTube channel or my Instagram feed is, wow, that machine looks fantastic. And they're not wrong. It really is a standout in its class in terms of how it looks, its presentation, its fit and finish. And I think that that is more important than a lot of people might say because let's be honest, an espresso machine spends more time sitting on your counter for you to look at than you actually spend using it. So they should look great and the steel line really looks fantastic when it's sitting on the counter. Now beyond that, it offers a ton of crazy features that are really kind of not well represented in this price range. It's got PID on the group head, which allows you to adjust the temperature of the water going to the portafilter. So if you have a light roast, you can turn the temperature up. If you've got a dark roast or a decaf, you can dial the temperature down a little bit. It's got an adjustable OPV, which allows you to adjust the pressure of the machine. Now, this is a big one because adjusting this on other other machines can be an absolute nightmare. You can find videos on how to adjust the OPV on a Gaja Classic Pro, for example. You pretty much need to take the whole machine apart in order to make an adjustment. You need to replace parts, it's crazy. On a Rocket, which is even more expensive than the Duo, you need to open up the whole casing um, to really make what is a small but critical adjustment to the machine. With the steel line, there is a screw right up in here, and all you need to do is put a screwdriver in while your blank basket is in, and turn it and watch the dial, and you'll see the OPV adjust. It takes, honestly, about 90 seconds. It also has programmable pre-infusion, which is absolutely fantastic, zero to five seconds, and pre-infusion um, pre-wets your puck, which can really help reduce channeling and give you a more even extraction. When I'm pulling on my Escaso and posting videos on it online, people always say, how do you get it to come out like that so evenly? And the pre-infusion really is one of the secrets to doing that well. It's got a bunch of other great features like a two liter reservoir, no burn steam wand, so the milk doesn't burn onto the steam wand and you can touch it with your bare hands. It's got a very easily removable drip tray for cleaning, white LEDs. I, I can tell you if I can't stand something, it's blue, bright blue LEDs on an espresso machine. This, these are a beautiful white color. To me, that makes a big difference. Maybe not to you, but to me it does. One other thing that I really like about the Duo that isn't on the Uno line is the water spout. And the water spout not only allows you to clean your cups or pre-warm your cups, but it also makes for a quick and easy way to fire out some water for an Americano so you don't have to heat a kettle. It's great. It's also got a dual vibratory pump, which is very common for machines in this price range. And it's got two settings of programmable shot memory. So once you dial in your shot, you can just hit a button and it'll pull it perfectly for you, pre-infusion included. 
Now this machine is built around a dual thermal coil design, which basically means there is a solid block of metal and there's a tube that coils around inside that metal, which heats the water and then delivers it to either the group or the steam wand. Now there's two thermal coils in this machine so that you can pull um, espresso while you're steaming and that can really up your speed if you want to deliver drinks a lot more quickly. And this is really a lot different than some other machines. You know, once you go into the Elite Mara X or the Rocket, um, you're gonna start to see boilers in machines. And boilers can be great, but there are several disadvantages to a boiler. You can think of a thermal coil as a on-demand hot water heater, whereas a boiler is like a large hot water tank in your house. Now, if you think about it that way, on-demand water heaters are great because they're not always keeping this big body of water hot all the time. They heat the water as it's needed and deliver it at the perfect temperature. Now, that design has a couple advantages to it. Number one, you're gonna get super fast warm-up time. This thing can pull shots in as little as two minutes. I usually give it a five-minute warm-up, but honestly, when the kids are running around and you're busy in the morning, that fast warm-up time is a dream. You don't gotta worry about letting the machine sit for 30 minutes while it warms up like you would in a boiler. Also, the temperature of the water is going to be incredibly stable. The Escaso spec on this is 0.5 degrees Celsius plus or minus, which is an incredibly tight tolerance for an espresso machine. Many other machines out there, both boiler and thermal coil, will have a much wider variance in terms of their temperature stability. And on these machines, it's incredibly stable. Another big advantage is unlimited steam. Unlike a boiler, there's no recovery time. So you could literally just keep steaming as long as you have water. Water, and because that water is getting heated on the way to the steam wand, it will just keep coming out on a continuous pressure. Now the flip side of this is that a boiler will give you more steam power. Now Escasso has an upgrade coming out for this machine that ups the steam power by 25%. I'm excited to review that when it comes my way. However, let me tell you why this isn't that big of a deal. As long as a machine is powerful enough to integrate milk well, extra power only really impacts the speed with which you can make drinks. So unless you're making 12 drinks back to back, if it's gonna take you a little bit longer to steam a pitcher of milk, that's actually not the worst thing. I make steam drinks for me and my wife Sarah at home all the time on this, and honestly, the extra time it takes is negligible, and you get all the other benefits of a thermocoil setup. Now, I wanna tell you one of the most important things for me when it comes to the thermocoil design, and that is energy efficiency. Both as a dad and a climate conscious person, energy efficiency is a big deal, and boilers are just less energy efficient than machines like this. They need to keep that huge mass of water inside the machine hot all the time, they take longer to warm up, and they just take more energy. It's worse for the climate climate and your wallet. So for me, that is a very important consideration as well. The build quality is fantastic and it really feels solid when you're using it. It's all metal, there's no plastic parts, even the switches, the side panels, it's all metal, which is really nice when you're using it. And it offers all of those features, the incredible looks and the great build quality at a very competitive price. Now I've talked a lot about why the design is great, what I like about it, where the compromises are. I even like where the compromises are in the design of this machine. There are a couple things that I don't love about this machine. Number one, I'm a tinkerer. So I really wish there was a little bit more flexibility in terms of the pre-infusion of this machine. I would love for it to go a little bit longer than five seconds if I wanted to do that, but it doesn't. I'll tell you, Honestly, the shots come out great, and most of the time I keep the pre-infusion settings at five seconds, and it works great. Another thing I don't love is trying to navigate the menus with this very simple LED. There's two buttons here that you can use to navigate the menus and change all the settings. I'm gonna tell you something, spend 10 minutes, read that section of the manual, and it's gonna be a lot easier for you. Also, it doesn't have a standby mode. Um, so it's either on or it's off. Honestly, because it heats up so fast, that's not really a huge issue. Those things that I don't love really are pretty minor in the grand scheme of things. I love using this machine and any compromises that have been made, you know, a little bit less steam power are more than made up for in other areas. I love the super fast warm up time and the energy efficiency, that is huge. And the shots that come out of it are unreal. Like they come out evenly, the pre-infusion really minimizes the channeling and it's just a pleasure to use. It's 
simple, it's fast, it makes great espresso, and it looks fantastic sitting on the counter. And really, that's what you want in a home espresso machine. Now, if you're considering this machine as an option for you at home, there are a couple things that you might want to think about. Number one, I would highly recommend getting a bottomless portafilter. That's going to help you diagnose your shots and get to better shots more quickly. Also, the Escaso Duo comes with seven and 14 gram baskets, which are single and double, both pressurized and non-pressurized. If you like 18 gram shots or 20 gram shots, you're gonna wanna get a triple basket if your bottomless portafilter doesn't come with it. Um, that's something that I would definitely recommend as well. Overall, some pretty minor upgrades. So I think the last thing that we gotta do here is pull a shot of espresso. But before we do, I wanna ask you a favor. If this video was helpful for you, I would love for you to like it, subscribe to my channel. That's gonna tell YouTube that the stuff I got going on here is fantastic and it should show it to more people. Honestly, those two things are two of the most helpful things you can do for me if my content is helpful for you and I would love for you to do it. So I'm gonna pull this shot. I've got 18 grams of espresso ground up. I'm just gonna do a little bit of WDT and I'm gonna tamp. Switch to my bottomless and we're gonna pull a shot. Looks great. Mm, that is a silky smooth, perfectly extracted cup of coffee. I love it. So those are my thoughts on the Escaso Steel Duo. I would love to know your thoughts on it. Leave me a comment. But in the meantime, happy brewing. Don't forget to subscribe and we'll see you next time.